there, Michael Bovey with Consumer Recovery Network and I'm back to talk to you about negotiating and settling business debt. Most of our channel has been dedicated to how to resolve consumer accounts that you can no longer afford to pay, need to consolidate, whatever the case may be. But now, I want to talk about how to do that with a business. I've had some bullet points that I've prepared and I want to touch on each one of these, but they're by no means a comprehensive list of the kind of concerns that you have to have when negotiating business debt. Um, there are some very different things that you have to think about versus settling consumer debt. So let's get started. The first is whether or not your business is going to stay open or if it's closed or closing. The reason this is important is because other vendors, you uh, suppliers that you may have, let's say you negotiate a bank loan, pay it off uh, for less, that shows up on your Dun & Bradstreet listing and you have vendors and suppliers that might look at that, see that, either current ones or ones in the future and uh, may not want to take a risk on lending to you or helping you stock your shelves. So you have to be careful of the types of things that you select for settlement or whether you even do it at all if you're an ongoing concern. If you're, uh, say, closed, obviously those things don't matter as much. Um, if you're winding down, say, you know, you're just going into your slow season, it wasn't a great high season, and you don't know whether or not you're going to make it to you know late spring when things start picking up um, and you certainly can't continue to make payments and afford them through those months so you have to do something well you don't have a choice well you know those decisions become easier to make because they're not really being uh, made they're, they're they're made for you but as you begin to think about winding the business down you can make some strategic decisions early rather than later and um, set yourself up for success with negotiations, so it does matter. Next is whether or not you personally guarantee an account, and that's important. Sometimes we forget, I've done it, right? I open up a, a business account, and I go into the bank, and you know, I give my social security number as part of the application process. They've ran my credit um, along with the business, and they've also uh, included a clause in the contract, whether I read it fully or, or just forgot about it, that uh, I'm on the hook. I personally guarantee you if the business stops paying, that I'm personally going to pay. And that means that your personal assets are on the line if you don't, if you just blow off your clothes in the business, you blow off the, the open credit lines that haven't been paid, credit cards, whatever. Um, they can come after you personally, and do, actually. And it's really popular, actually, with Wells Fargo, Chase, Capital One, uh, American Express, these personal guarantees. Next is um, size of debt, size matters. The larger the debt, the more likely, in my experience, to get more dynamic settlement results, the smaller the debt. Sometimes the settlement results aren't as great. That's very consistent with consumer debts as well. Um, that I don't want to harp on too much, but I'll give you an example. In, a couple months ago, I did a business account, a file. Uh, the business was winding down. It wasn't fully closed, but it certainly wasn't going to remain open. And there was a $197,000 business line of credit that we negotiated with a debt collector just on the other side of the original creditor sending it to them. The deal with the original creditor would not have been as good as the one that we got with the debt collector. And sometimes that's the case. Sometimes you strategically decide who you're going to negotiate with and get the best settlement from um, in advance. So it's important to you know, have that intel and weigh all of those options and, and do, the, do the math, do the numbers. Any liens or uh, encumbrances on inventory or property, um, real property, machinery, um, that kind of thing, that matters in whether or not you look to settle a debt. And you may have forgotten if there were UCC financing statements that were filed along with the loan and you put inventory or machinery that you need to do your job to, to stay open, um, you have to be very careful in, in whether or not you choose to renegotiate terms um, try and negotiate a, a lower balance payoff when there are liens filed against uh, real property and, and inventory. Uh, that's something you know we're very very good at discussing with you one on one. So reach out to us on the hotline. Um, affordability and settlement targets that are realistic. So this is very similar to consumer debt when you're negotiating business accounts. Um, you need to know what your targets are so that you can select the right accounts that you're going to settle or not settle if you're open and you need to know what you're realistically able capable of doing 
or what these lenders, if you're closed, um, will settle for, and then whether or not you can do that with whatever you're doing now or the financial resources that you have available to you either now or in the near future. Um, one of the biggest problems I find with people that call in, sometimes they've read uh, internet articles and things that they've come across forums, for example, and the discussion is about how to settle for pennies on the dollar but pennies on the dollar doesn't happen. I mean, it did at the height of the recession, and it can if you're on a fixed income, um, you know, no asset uh, kind of situation, your collectability score, if you will, is quite low. But for most business owners, um, my experience is, is that pennies on the dollar is just not an option. We can talk about you know, those kind of issues in the comments below the video here and on our website. Actually, we have a pretty active page about negotiating and settling business accounts on the consumerrecoverynetwork.com site. And then, of course, you have the hotline. Call us. Um, paying your deals. Now, this is important because it's something that people may not be aware of. When you lump sum settle an account for less than you owe, sometimes there's terms available. So, depending on the creditor, depending on the circumstances, depending on how long you know, you've gone without paying and whether you're dealing with a debt collector or even in litigation. Sometimes uh, some pretty dynamic deals can be put together where not only do you get the reduction of balance, but you also get time to pay. Um, in some cases, you know, 12 months or more. And I'm not talking about renegotiating terms where you're paying back the full balance and signing a, some kind of new credit contract where, you know, you're still going to pay the full balance back now over a longer period of time because it's more affordable for you. I'm talking about, say, settling a debt for half off and getting 12 months to pay 50%. That can make a deal that would have otherwise been unaffordable, you didn't have the resources to fund it, highly affordable and more likely for you to be able to follow through on. So you have to think about that as, oh, that just sounds like out of reach. Actually, maybe not. So that's another factor that we can talk about. There are a lot more details to cover about whether or not you should try to negotiate business debts. Uh, we can't cover them all in these brief videos. That's why we want to talk to you in the comments or on the phone. Um, one thing I'll leave you with is that, uh, believe it or not, Small Business Administration loans, SBA loans, are actually negotiable as well. So uh, if you're struggling to keep current with an SBA loan, don't think that this isn't an option. Reach out to us through the comments on the hotline. You can reach me, Michael Bovey, by pressing number two.